OpenSSL in True, Faster Post Quantum TLS Key Exchange. I am Nicola Tuberi from Tampere University, and this is a joint work with Daniel J. Bernstein, Billy Bob Bramley, and Ming Ching Chen. In the next minutes, I will cover the motivation behind our work and then look at the background of previous post quantum integration experiments upon which we built. Uh, finally, I will give you an overview of OpenSSL in True and what you will find in the full paper and finish with some conclusions. Let's start with, with the motivation. Why do we care now about post quantum crypto? We care because since 1994, Short's algorithm undermines the security of the integer factorization problem and the discrete, discrete logarithm problem, which are the fundamental assumptions at the core of the currently deployed asymmetric cryptography. Uh, we currently don't know of any sufficiently advanced quantum computer to run the Short algorithm against uh, currently recommended parameter sizes, but especially for confidentiality, threats are already here. So for that transit, what if an attacker records current communications to later decrypt them once quantum attacks are viable? And for data trust, what if an entity must store data now, being reasonably sure that it can stay confidential for the next 20 or more years? On top of this, we have another problem, which is that time and inertia fight against new cryptographic standards. And let's consider ECC, elliptical cryptography, as an example of a recent cryptographic transition. ECC was introduced around 1985, but it was only around 2000 that SECG published finally standards for ECDSA and ECDH. After this, it became popular only during the last decade and truly pervasive only with TLS 1.3. Even considering this as a milestone, ECC for the web public infrastructure, for example, today is still moving past the first deployment step, steps. And this is all to say that it took us at least 20 to 30 years to go through development, serialization, hardening, garnering trust, adoption, integration, and deployment, which are steps required for a successful cryptographic transition. So the conclusion here is that if we want to prevent or minimize disruption, we can't wait until powerful compu quantum computers are available to start the process. And that's why in 2016, NIST started a post quantum cryptography standardization process. The process has since gone through three rounds of selection and consolidation, and it's now progressing to a standardization phase alongside a fourth round. Uh, the, the process is selecting two separate operations, and they are post-quantum encryption in the form of key encapsulation methods, CAM, and post-quantum digital signatures for authentication. In this work, we focused only on post-quantum confidentiality, CAM, and not on post-quantum authentication. We selected Entru Prime, which was one of the CAM alternate candidates until the end of round three, which was finally announced in July. Uh, Entry Prime submission proposes two variants, and we work on the streamline Entry Prime as Entry P uh, variant, which is a small lattice based scam designed to minimize the complexity of a thorough security review. Uh, even though it did not survive the round three of NIST PQC, it has been already integrated, for example, in OpenSSH. And uh, since the 9.0 release, as Entry P is enabled by default in OpenSSH. So let's look at the background of our previous experiment of TLS integration for post-quantum, uh, which was run in 2019 by Cloudflare and Google. This picture comes from a nice analogy by Nick Sullivan. And as you can see, uh, two different crypt hybrid crypto systems were um, pitted against each other. They were hybrid because they mix a post-quantum component with a traditional component, which for both crypto system is X25519. On the left, the post-quantum component is true HRSS, and uh, it is associated with an ostrich because it's taller as it requires longer cryptographic material, but it's also faster in computation. Uh, on the right side, instead, the post-quantum component was psych, but, uh, which is associated with a turkey because it has shorter cryptographic material, but also slower computation. So this experiment ran in 2019, and the conclusion was that n HRSS was clearly a winner both on server and client side, at least for the TLS use case. So in this work, we present OpenSSL in True, which is an improved integration of post-quantum CAM into TLS 1.3. And we improve on the post-quantum portion of CCPQ2. So in our experiment, does not use a hybrid agreement, but isolates the post-quantum component for better comparison against other post-quantum crypto systems. Nonetheless, our paper does not make recommendations for or against hybrids. Our performance and software engineering contributions are equally applicable to hybrid and non-hybrid scenarios. So how did we improve on the post-quantum portion of CCPQ2? We did it in two linked ways, key exchange performance and TLS software engineering. So how, uh, let's have a look at the cryptographic features of post-quantum components of the two experiments. As I anticipated, in OpenSSL in True, we picked a different crypto system, which is S-Entropy. And in particular, we picked the S-Entropy 761 parameter set, which is in the same security class as, uh, class as n true HRSS 701, which was featured in CCPQ2. Uh, looking at the length of cryptographic material, they are in the same uh, ballpark. So there is not a big difference here. The big difference comes in the performance uh, figures. Uh, before our work, uh, Keygen for S Entropy 761 was three, over three times slower uh, than for n 2 HRSS 701. And considering the full cost of Keygen plus encapsulation plus decapsulation, uh, it was 
over 2.5 times lower for S entropy 761 than for uh, n true HRSS 701. Uh, but uh, in our work, uh, we we managed to optimize the entropy 761. Particularly, we managed to exceed a five times speed up on Kigen and to also achieve smaller gains on the encapsulation and decapsulation operations. Overall, our experiments uh, our experiment ends up using a higher performance ostrich, if you want, which also has better security level and does not share uh, the cyclotomic concerns of n true HRSS. So how did we manage to improve Kijan performance? The fundamental consideration here is that the bottleneck in SNTP Kijan is the computation of certain types of inverses. So the idea here is to adopt Montgomery's trick, which is based on the fact that two independent inverses, one over A and one over B, can be computed as B times R and A times R, respectively, from a single inversion R. And this can be, of course, repeated, for example, converting 32 inversions into a single inversion plus 93 multiplications. Uh, we can adopt this trick by implementing a batch keygen operation. But this must be designed so that the batch size is large enough for inversion time to mostly disappear and yet small enough to avoid creating problems with latency, cache misses, etc. Et um, we also had to design and develop new algorithms and software to optimize the entropy multiplication, since previously the multiplications were mostly a big factor times small factor, but Montgomery's trick requires uh, optimizing for big factor times big factor multiplication. So this is, in a nutshell, uh, how we improve the Kijan performance. Let's now move to the engineering side. So in this slide, you will see uh, on the left and on the right two views of the same architecture. Let's start from what we wanted to achieve. What we wanted to achieve was enable um, the unmodified software ecosystem on the top uh, to run TLS 1.3 key agreement using fast post quantum CAN. Uh, this uh, architecture from the actor's point of view is very similar to the CCPQ2 uh, architecture. So we have on the left side a client which is running a web browser, in this case Epiphany, and on the right side we have a TLS terminator, in, which, in this case running a stunnel, uh, which talks on the backend with a backend web server. So how did we manage to uh, enable fast post quantum cam in unmodified software? We managed to do that by altering everything under uh, this boundary line. The first layer below this boundary line is the cryptographic library layer. So both on the client side and on the server side, uh, the applications are running, um, are, are based on OpenSSL. So we released a patch set for OpenSSL, which enables support for private TLS code points for SNTP and also allows LibSSL uh, to uh, handle CAM groups alongside um, non interactive key exchange like Diffie Hellman and Elliptic Curve Diffie Hellman uh, as part of the key agreement. And this was done transparently for the TLS protocol. And uh, all these patches were mostly uh, contained within the LibSSL part of OpenSSL. But the other important thing that you might have noticed is that among our patch set, I didn't mention anything about optimized implementation for s entropy in, uh, in, in the patch set for OpenSSL. And that's why, that, that's because we did not include in the patch set the, the optimized software. Instead, we chose to decouple OpenSSL from the implementation through an intermediate layer, which is represented by this engine. So engine in OpenSSL language is uh, a module to interface with, for example, an hardware accelerator. But there is no requirement for this to be a hardware device. And indeed, we use, use it to interface with our software implementation. So we released a new engine, which we dubbed Engine True, which does several things. It provides all the data structures and uh, interfaces that OpenSSL requires to uh, offer a new uh, crypto system inside the library. And uh, it also supports the keygen batching. And this is done transparently for both OpenSSL and the applications on top. And this is very important because it removes the complexity of deploying batch keygen without changing existing applications. Uh, but once again, the actual optimized implementation of SNTP is not included in this layer. So our engine true engine true is a shallow dynamically loadable module uh, for libcrypto. And the, the actual implementation is separate from the engine and it's in the bottom layer of the, the left stack. Uh, as you can see, the bottom layer uh, consists of the rapidly evolving post-quantum software ecosystem. In here, we released two new libraries, Libra Entropy 761 and 857 which provide the new optimized implementations of S-Entropy uh, featuring all the details that I discussed before about the performance improvement. This is the layer that actually contains the actual cryptographic functionality. And the idea here is to use the engine to 
uh, decouple, OpenSSL from the rapidly evolving post-quantum software ecosystem and vice versa. So OpenSSL, the patch set to OpenSSL in this case doesn't need to be updated as frequently as the updates in the uh, rapidly evolving post-quantum software ecosystem and vice versa, the developers of these scan libraries do not need to know anything about the internal details of the OpenSSL API, which can be more complex than the standardized CAM API uh, that, that they need to focus on while working on this layer. And the, the other advantage is that the, these new CAM libraries can be directly reused by other uh, cryptographic libraries and they are not bound to OpenSSL in any way. So this architecture also allows us to run end-to-end uh, -end TLS macro benchmark. And this is what this picture uh, um, briefly summarize. So this picture shows cumulative distributions of handshake performance under different crypto systems in a local network. And the results show that in our implementation, both the recommended S entropy 761 parameter set and the higher security S entropy 857 consistently achieve more connections per second than the optimized implementations of pre-quantum alternatives currently deployed at large, which are represented here by X25519 and P256, which are the uh, most optimized uh, implementations included uh, in uh, uh, OpenSSL 111 uh, for the system where we run the experiment. It is important to remark that one should not conclude from this picture that S entropy 761 and S entropy 857 cost less than ECC overall. Uh, the unloaded high bandwidth network of our experimental environment masks the higher communication cost of the lattice crypto systems. So this picture must be considered in the context of our uh, experimental environment. Conclusions. Uh, we provided with OpenOSSL2 faster optimized implementation for various S-entropy parameter sets, including huge batching gains on Keygen. We also achieved a transparent integration for existing applications via an OpenSSL engine. And we did so decoupling OpenSSL from fast-paced development of optimized post-quantum implementations and vice versa, the latter from data types and interfaces specific to OpenSSL. I invite you to check the paper and its appendices for more math details, micro and macro benchmarks, comparisons, and more. Also, please try the open source artifact that we released at the URL that you can see on the slide. Thank you for your attention. This was OpenSSL in true, faster post-quantum TLS key exchange. And now I welcome your questions.